Hey, what's going on everyone? In this video, I'm gonna show you a quick little hack that I came up with to solve a very specific problem. The idea is you have, let's say a thousand nodes running some service. It'll be Nginx in this case. This will be a resource hungry service um, that let's say supports your application in some way. Maybe it's like a logging thing. Maybe it's a business intelligence thing that could potentially cause problems for things you actually care about. So you need some way of turning this process off. Uh, quickly everywhere. You have enough nodes that just a bash for loop is not going to cut it. Uh, here's where console kind of comes in. Console has a built-in key value store and in addition to the many many other very useful things that it can do, I just I like this I like this trick because it's so simple. It takes you know very little buy-in as long as you have console running you can do this. And it's kind of something you can adapt to older workflows and older kind of ways of doing infrastructure and automation like this doesn't presuppose you have everything in Terraform. It doesn't presuppose that you're running containers everywhere. It doesn't presuppose, uh, presuppose that you're running Nomad or Kubernetes or, you know, this is like it works just as well with the past way of doing things as it does with the current and future ways of doing things. I have here a, a path called service nginx enabled. Uh, you can see it up here. And I've got that set to true. Uh, I'll show you when I bring up this console cluster, I basically set that to true. When I set this to anything except for true, like false, magically, all of my nginxin or whatever nodes are running this process, uh, go ahead and shut down that process. As soon as let's say this problem, we've done some troubleshooting, we realize it's not going to happen again, I can just go turn this on again. Um, and ta-da, Nginx is running again. Now again, Nginx is just a stand-in here, but it's the mechanism here that is important and it's the mechanism that's quite useful. A simple console config, a simple watch, which simply says, please watch this key path, and then fire off a script and you're gonna execute this. And as long as you have placed some kind of executable script here, um, it will get run. Obviously, this is uh, something you can do all kinds of stuff with. You don't just have to stop or start a service. This is really just an example. It means you can react to changes in the key value store any way you like. It's very exciting. And these watches, there's actually a bunch of other things you can do with them. You do much more to it than just running a simple script. Okay, so let's look at the actual scripts that are doing the heavy lifting here. So fine, now we have Nginx, true, the value of service Nginx enabled in the console key value store is true. Let's see how that's actually, actually handled. So a very, very simple server config. I'm telling it, yes, you are a server, not just an agent. I'm telling it um, to run the console UI. Uh, it needs a data deer uh, value where it's gonna stick its state. I am enabling debug just because this is not a production machine. I want to be able to troubleshoot quickly. We're going to hook this up to syslog. And uh, this one's important for what we're doing, which is to enable local script checks. And that lets us run scripts in response to things. Um, it also lets us uh, create console health checks that run scripts to check health. Um, so when I'm like developing, this is occasionally something I enable, there are security implications to this. So before you roll this out in prod, just read up on console basics and what local script checks mean. So let's look at what the watch actually, like how that's defined. So you can see that there's this watches JSON list um, and each of these objects inside of it is one console watch. We're watching a key there's other types of watches as well. And the key that we're watching is service Nginx enabled. And surprise, surprise, that's the key that we're setting uh, in the other script. Uh, the, the way that we're gonna handle our response to a change in this is gonna be a script. And the arguments uh, are gonna be the script location and the argument that the script takes, basically. So this is literally, think of this as like a command line call. Like this is something you're typing in on the command line, command, argument. And uh, so that's really, really straightforward. Now let's actually look at what this very simple example script is doing. 
uh, first uh, semi-portable Bash shebang line. Uh, this is generally my default for when I'm writing Bash. I try to keep my Bash to a minimum, but when I do set EUO pipe fail, um, it's going to make it behave a lot more like a, a real programming language. <laughs> I said it. Uh, it's going to mean that when you when there's an error, it's not just going to go to the next line and forget all about it uh, and keep executing and put you in some bizarre undefined state, or at least a state that you didn't uh, imagine when you were programming it. It also fails on unset variables, and uh, you're setting the pipe fail option so that if at any point in like a chain of pipes something fails, it also exits. It just makes things behave a lot more like you're probably used to from Python, Ruby, or any any modern uh, programming or scripting language. So, dollar sign one is our argument. So we're checking to make sure that we have an argument. And if you remember, the argument we're expecting is a key path here. Basically, we're just making sure that it has an argument, and then we go ahead and look up the value there. And that we're going to assign to the Nginx desired state. We're just going to also always lower this when we're comparing it so that we don't have to have a bunch of extra cases here. So that if someone types in, if, if say a sysadmin is using the GUI because he's not a programmer, he never wants to learn, and he doesn't want to go into the bright, beautiful future, and he wants to get laid off in four years, well, he can fat finger this in the GUI, type in capital true or some bizarre mixed case true, and, and this will basically still work. Uh, because it's always going to just convert whatever's in there to lowercase. And if it's some permutation of characters that look like true, then it's going to match this. Remember, this is it's not just like periodically polling this value or doing anything. Like the value will have just changed from something else to true. So if this thing has just been set to true, well, then we're going to start Nginx. If it's been set to anything else, and that's why this hook is being fired, or this watch is firing the script, uh, then we're going to go ahead and stop Nginx, sleep for a little while to make sure that it's okay, uh, and then finally try to murder Nginx where it stands. Now, you can add a little bit more logic. I have this here because often it's not going to just be Nginx, and it might be your own service, like part of your application that you support, and maybe your developers you know, trap some signals or do some stuff that make it... Uh, a little bit more harder to kill or, or more importantly more dangerous to kill like could there be data loss if it's just murdered so I have this really just to represent like you may be doing something slightly more complex here to safely stop whatever thing you're trying to stop okay so that is the entire mechanism it's really simple and I think it's one of the beautiful things about console is that it enables this even though this isn't like you can use the tool to do all kinds of different things, even that its creators maybe didn't imagine. It's a useful way for, to integrate it with a very traditional infrastructure setup still. You can be using very traditional tools, and if you happen to be running console, you can do this. So how do you actually recreate what you've just seen? Uh, good news, I've done all the work for you, uh, but we're gonna read through the uh, through the code together so you can actually understand what's happening. So you can clone this repository um, and this is really all you'll need to do following these instructions to create exactly uh, the kind of mechanism that you just saw demonstrated. So let's have a look at the configuration code that actually makes that work. So this is the Vagrant file. This is what creates our example VM so that we can do this all in a little VM instead of having to build out a real environment with something like Terraform. All right, so this is just the base box that we're pulling from. So we're pulling an Ubuntu Bionic image. We are forwarding a couple ports, the Nginx port and the console UI port so that we can see beautiful graphics, click around in a UI um, and satisfy those 1994 sysadmin instincts. Here's the first kind of real thing we're doing. Uh, we're doing some shell provisioning. This gets run as the root user as this thing is coming up. First, we do an apt-get update. Uh, we install just a couple Nginx and uh, a couple of utilities. wget for downloading packages and binaries and stuff and unzip. We're gonna make a console directory in Etsy where we're gonna stick all the console configuration. And then we start up Nginx. Next thing we do is install console. We go get the binary, unzip it, and put it in the destination user local bin, which is on our path. So we'll 
just be able to type in console and it'll find the right binary. So that's the install. Then we add a couple of config files which I've created um, and I'll go over those one by one. But basically it's the, the console watch config which sets up, which tells console to watch for changes in its key value store and then do something in response to those. You can think of them as like hooks basically. Then a handler script, which, which this is configured to actually fire off when it detects a change. And our basic console config. We're doing a few shenanigans um, just because of permissions and how they work and how what user scripts execute as. Um, ironically, this is actually the part that I screwed around with the most while I was creating this project, not the actual project code itself. Welcome to DevOps. So once we have those in place, we basically fix the ownership. This is not something you have to think about in your production environments because configs will probably make it onto servers in a very different way. Um, and then we just put them in place. So we stick them in their final destination. And then we really just launch console with its configuration that we created there before. So the server.json. And we're telling it that it's bootstrapping. So like, don't go looking for another console master, just bootstrap yourself, bind to, uh, this is syntax that tells it to look for whatever IP ETH is, um, the ETH0 device has. And this client 0000 makes the UI available. Um, it, this isn't just about the UI, but um, it makes the UI available on all public interfaces, which lets us map it uh, and see it from our host machine. So finally, console is running. The console agent is running, it's bootstrapped, everything's fine. I'm just putting in a sleep five. This is actually usually not necessary, but um, just to make sure everything's cool by the time we try to write to the console key value store, I sleep for five seconds. And then we just add a simple value at this key location, at this path. So at service nginx enabled, we set the value true. Now, none of these things exist. They're all just gonna be created as I give it this path. This is not something that is like on the tin for console, but I just wanted to kind of demonstrate the flexibility of this tool that when you have it running, the basic kind of features it has compose into kind of whatever you need, much like a good suite of command line tools. You can solve all kinds of problems in a flexible, kind of reproducible, easily grokkable way. Uh, and that's what makes it amazing. Every time you're like, man, it would be so useful if it had this specific feature for a problem I'm running into, you realize, oh my God, it has the primitives that I can use to cobble this custom solution together for my use case. If that's been uh, fun, delicious, and helpful, then like, subscribe, do whatever it is that the kids are doing these days, and uh, I'll keep making more stuff. Just a disclaimer, I do work for HashiCorp, but that's not why I'm making this. Like I've loved console since like 2015 and I was way before I started working for them. <laughs> Not that anyone's accused me of shilling for HashiCorp yet, <laughs> but you know, it, it's not so much that I make videos about HashiCorp stuff because I work for them. It's the other way around. I work for them because I freaking love their stuff. And that also happens to be why I make videos about it. So look out for more of that. Um, we're doing a bunch of cool stuff at work that I'm excited to share uh, and that is finally becoming public. So yeah, I hope that's been useful. Peace and love people.